Our lesson for November the 27th, 2016, Lesson 13. We're in Unit 3, which is titled Alpha and Omega. Our lesson for this week is titled From Beginning to End. Our devotional reading is found in the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 4b through verse 8. Our background scripture is also in Revelation, taken from the 22nd chapter, verses 8 through 21. And our printed passage is Revelation 22, verses 12 through 21. In our key verse, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Our lesson name as a result of studying this lesson that the students should be able to do these things. Survey the, vivil, the biblical references to the second coming in order to see the importance of their hope for reality. Rejoice that the invitation from Jesus to join the new community continues through the end of all times. And thirdly, to embrace the call to become part of God's kingdom from beginning to end. In the lesson before us, we have a solemn ratification of God's promises, which is found throughout the whole Bible. And this is confirmed by the name and nature of God who proclaims the truth. So we find in verse 12 of our lesson where it states, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. We find stated in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 11, where it says, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Now, we have to understand that the Bible teaches us that the return of Christ will be personal and corporal in two stages. To the air. He come back to the air before the tribulations, which is called the rapture. We find in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 14 through 17, and 16, through 16 and 17 says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we be with the Lord forevermore. This is also found in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. And also in the book of Revelations, the third chapter and the tenth verse. Then he will return to the earth after the tribulation. For the saints, the first part of his second coming or the second advent, the saints will meet him in the air. Okay? All the Christians, past and present and future Christians at his return will meet him in the air. And then it will be a period of seven years before his appearing in the air to his actual 
appearing on the earth. We find that it says that then he will return to the earth after the period which is called the tribulation. For Matthew 24 and verses 29 and 30 says, immediately after the stress, the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will give will not give his light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. We need to understand that that the scripture teaches that the coming of the Lord has a threefold relation. That is to the church, to the nation Israel, and to the Gentile nations. To the church, the descent of the Lord into the air is to raise believers who have died and to change the living Christians is a constant expectation and blessed hope of the Christians. This is the Christians' hope that the Lord will come back and 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 receive them to Himself. To Israel, to the nation Israel, the return of the Lord to the earth is to accomplish the yet unfulfilled prophecies of Israel's national regathering, conversion, and establishment in peace and power under the, the Nivic covenant. To the Gentile nations, the return of Christ is to bring the destruction of the present political world system and judgment followed by the worldwide Gentile conversion and participation in the blessing of the kingdom. We have to understand that the rewards will be given to the saints in the air. Now, God offered to the lost salvation and for faithful service, of the saints of the saved, he offer rewards. Now, salvation is a free gift, whereas rewards are earned by the saints for faithful service unto the Lord. We must remember that salvation is a present possession, whereas rewards are a future attainment to be given at the rapture. For the scripture teach that we all, talking about saints, must stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the beamer seat of Christ, to, to give account of the deeds that we have done in the body. Not account for salvation because we have accepted, the saints have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And, and, and that the penalty for their sins was judged at Calvary's cross. But now the, the Christians stand before the judgment seat of Christ for, the, for faithful service, for, for the deeds that he has done or she has done in the body as Christians. And that it, it says that how that our works would be tried by the fire. And that, and that if they are precious works such as silver and gold, that the fire was just testing. But if, if, if they are works of the flesh, such things as stubble and hay, and that they would be burned up by the fire, but the Christian himself would be saved as if one snatched from the fire. And so now, and, and so now that we have to understand that this is in, the future for the saints. For Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 says, says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who long for his appearance. There will be rewards given unto the saints, crowns for for faithful service, and and that we as Christians, though God has given us different ministries and different ability and gifts of the Spirit, that this is one reward that all saints can attain, and that is to long for His appearing. That is to have an earnest yearning within our hearts that the Lord would come back soon. Looking looking for our Savior in hope. Verse 13 through 15 of our lesson states I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gate into the city. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. The Alpha and the Omega, that is, that Jesus, that he is the first and the last. The same from first to last. And so is his word too. And he will, by his word, give his people who conform themselves to his word, to the word of God, a right to the tree of life and, and the entrance into this glorious city that, that we have seen previously that came down from heaven. But this is also same faithful and true word of God not only give promises to those who love him and that will be obedient unto his word and, and that the, but the word of God condemns and excludes from this glorious city and the very presence of God all wicked, unrighteous persons and particularly those that love and make lies. Jesus came for one purpose. That was to give his life as a sacrifice on Calvary's cross. That, that he came to, to do the suffering for mankind, and that though, and though men sins had driven them far from God, but then God provided the righteousness that He required as a holy God through the sacrifice of His Son Jesus Christ, and that all who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, the righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed unto them. And so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. But those that refuse to accept Jesus Christ, God definitely states in his word that they will be excluded. They will be excluded from this glorious presence of God, this glorious city of God. And, 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 that, and, and that they will in no wise... In no way enter therein. And so it is very important for mankind to accept the word of God. And not only to just to hear it, but also to have faith in it and believe it and be saved. We find in verse 16 of our lesson, where it states, I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. I, Jesus, 
have sent my angels to testify. Jesus, the maker, the redeemer, and judge of all men. Jesus sent a special messenger from heaven to testify that, that Jesus Christ is the root of David. As this, we say that by because of his divine nature, think of this, that, that by his divine nature, for from that nature, him being very God, that all of the human race springs from the point that he is the creator of all things, and that without him was nothing made. And then it says that he is the offspring of David. That is to his human nature that he was born, that he was born in the tribe of Judah from the offspring of David. And, be, and by this becoming heir to the Jewish throne, that, that he is in the lineage of David and that he has a right to the throne of David. And we find written in Psalms 132 and verse 11 where God says that the Lord swore an oath to David, a sure oath that he will not revolt. One of your descendants I will place on your throne. Jesus of the seed of David. It also says that Jesus is the bright and morning star. Jesus, the bright and morning star. That is that Jesus, he is the splendor and the glory that will be of his kingdom. As the morning star, Jesus ushers in the sun, the light, so that he can bring that unclouded and eternal glory of the everlasting kingdom that through all our eternity that will be a blessed place, a, a place where God himself will dwell among the midst of the people. We have seen earlier that there will be no need for the sun of the moon. Why? Because the glory, the very Shekinah glory and the glory of Jesus Christ and God the Father, they will be there. So there will, there will be no darkness whatsoever. We find in verse uh, 17 of our lesson, and it says, And the Spirit and the Bride says, Come, let him that hear it say, Come, and let him that athirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The Spirit and the Bride. The Spirit here speaks of the Holy Spirit, where that Jesus said that when the Spirit is coming to the world, that he would not testify of himself, but but he would come to glorify the Son, to call mankind to the Son. The bride, the bride represents the, the church of God. We as Christians, we are the bride of Christ. And so, just as the Spirit witnesses to mankind, to the lost, to come, the bride, the body of Christ, or to witness to also to the unsaved word, to all mankind, is to come, is to come where? That is to come to Jesus, come to the Savior, and then for them to take And, and participate in the blessing of the gospel. The blessings of 
the good news. The gospel. The good news is that is that not talking about no harvest or or or, or, or temporal blessing. Not talking about uh, you know having a trouble free. Uh, existence and life that that everything gonna be sunshine and, and 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 the flowers blooming no but for them to come to Jesus and the good news about the gospel is that this is the gospel that Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and raised the third day according to to the scripture and that he is alive and that he has ascended into heaven and that whosoever shall confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in their heart that, that he died and that, that God raised him from the grave. Not only that he died, but that he died for their sins. There are sins in, in, in that, in, in that they can come and be saved. Now that word "saved" means to be. First of all, it means to be saved from the penalty of sin. For God said that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And also to be saved, delivered from the habit and dominion of sin in our everyday life. And then thirdly, to be saved one day from the very presence of sin. Oh, what a blessing that one day we will be delivered from these old sinful bodies that we dwell in, that we be delivered from this old sinful nature that steals and dwells in believers. Though as believers that we have also the, the spirit of God, the nature of God within us. But do not be deceived because, because that old ad, academic sinful nature is still within the same. The Lord said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And then he said, if we say that we, if we have not sinned, we lie and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, talking about Christians, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is a lifelong process where the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, cleanses us from the habit and dominion of sin in our everyday life. But then thirdly, we will be saved from the very presence of of sin from these old sinful bodies and then taken out of this sinful world. Lord have mercy. Thank God for 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 his deliverance. And it says come and be saved. This also talks about and declares the freeness of the offer of the gospel. No price, you can't buy it, is open to everybody. It is an invitation of mercy, not just to some, not just to a chosen race of people or a chosen nation of people, nor to people, no matter what your class in this life might be, whether you're rich or poor. But but it is an invitation to all mankind, and and it is free. Now this was left in this scripture in this verse. It was left here purposely to leave on the mind at the close of this book, the last book of the complete revelation of God. Not only at the close of the book of Revelation, but at the complete revelation of God. The whole Bible to leave a deep impression of a ample provision which God has made for the salvation of fallen man. 
it was God's purpose when he created man, when he created the world, that that so that he can have not angels, but a man that he made in his likeness and image, that he can bestow his love upon, that he created all this for the purpose of man, the earth, the garden, everything, so that man, to have dominion over, the, over God's creation. And so, but man failed. But God's purpose w would not be thwarted. And so God's purpose from the beginning was to be able to love and share his love with man and fellowship with him. So God has left this, even at the end of this book, a deep impression of the ample provision which God has made for the salvation of fallen man. Man cannot save himself. All the righteousness of man is as a filthy rag in the sight, in the sight of a holy God. And there is nothing that man can do. So God, through his word, has shown that, that he loves man so much that God wanted to lead man back from his darkness to bring him to this state in the future of this glorious state so that since man could not do it, God became a man in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, and that, and that God provided what man could not do. God took the punishment in his person of his son, Jesus Christ, for our sin so that man would not have to do that. So God here, even in the last book of this glorious, complete revelation of God, the Bible, he is still showing, he is still showing that he has provided the ample provision for the salvation of mankind. And nothing could be more appropriate than to announce it in the most clear and, a, and attracting form. That is, that salvation is free to all, and whosoever will may be saved. He said, come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The same message was given in Isaiah 55 and 1, which also says, Come, all ye that are athirst, come to the water, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without cost. Come, Jesus said, come all ye that la labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and I will give you rest for your soul. The invitation still goes out. He said, come. Don't, that, that is not, don't come. Where so many times we emphasize that they come to church. Don't come to no pastor or no preacher, but come to Jesus Christ. This is what the message is. Come if 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 you have a thirst, a thirst within us, it is only Jesus that can quench and satisfy that thirst. It's, as Psalm 42 says, as, as the harp, as the deer, panther, a thirst for the water, but oh my God, so my soul thirsts after God. There is a thirst that man really don't understand, that deep down inside, that is a thirst for God. But we have to come to what? 
to the living water, to the living water, where that thirst can be satisfied. We find in verses 18 or 19 of our lesson where it states, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these words, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. I testify unto everyone that hears the prophecy of this book. This is the Lord speaking. The Lord saying that he testified. He said it is confirmed by a most solemn sanction, condemning and cursing all who should dare to corrupt or change the word of God, either by adding to it or taking from it. We have to understand that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. There's a misconcept, there's a lie that the, that the devil has used over the centuries that, well, that this is just a book written by man. This is a book that though God used as an instrument, man as an instrument, but it was divine revelation and inspiration by which these men wrote through the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, in our time, in our society, we can see where, where people are adding to God's word, where people are taking from God's word. Well, well, we uh, use this part because we like this part. But the, but the part that condemns me and show me my sins, well, we're going to throw that out. Or either that, either that, that the revelation of God is not complete. Well, we're going to add another book to that to help God alone. No, no. God's word is complete. God's word is eternal. Heaven and earth will pass away first before God's word passes away. We do not need another book. We have to we have to take what God is written, whether we like it or not. God's word is like a two-edged sword that it cuts all the way deep. And you know what? That hurts. That hurts for to read in God's word where we see our sins. But you know the purpose of God's word is just like a surgeon's scalpel. That is it is to cut, to get to what ails us and to remove it. Though the initial in cut might hurt but then after it, the healing process is over, it is better for us. So, so, so the word of God shows us what we need. So we have to be mindful of this, that this is the word of God. And, and he that adds to the word of God will draw down upon him all the plagues written in this book and who and he who takes away anything from it cuts himself off from the promises and privileges of this book look at the promise that we have of eternal life 
the the promise where that God himself will will dwell among his people where that God himself will wipe away all tears from my eyes where that where that we will be able to live in we will be able to live in peace and love with God. And the privileges that we have, the privileges that we have is that we today, my brothers and sisters, that we are what? That we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Well, let me back up because first of all, it says that, that if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to those that who believe upon his name, that we are given the right to become the children of God. That, that God is our heavenly father. That God is a loving and a merciful and compassionate father. And then, and then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And the promise that God has made in, in his word, talking about the love that he has for us as his children. He says, behold, what matter of love is this? Is that we should be called the children of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, talking about the Lord Jesus, that we should be just like him. This is, this is a beautiful promise and privileges that we have in the word of God. And here, we read in the most solemn manner about the whole Bible. God said about assuring us that it is a book of the most sacred nature and divine authority. And of the most last importance. This is the word of God. This is what we need to sustain us as we walk, as we live, and go through this journey here on earth. It's to guide us. It's to make known the, the, the will of God for us in our life. It, it, it's to teach us in all facets of our life. We are to believe it. We are to embrace it. We are to feed upon it daily so that it would be nourishment for our soul. Because the word of God is of a, the last importance that we need. Verses 20 and 21 states, He which testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Jesus is the one who testified of these things. That, that he will come quickly. And so we hear that John, and then after he says that, that, that the Lord, after he had testified that, he would come quickly, which is what? An a, a affirmation of his promise to return to earth. Jesus said in the 14th chapter of John, he says that you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions, and I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again to receive you unto myself. Jesus promised to come again in John. 
The book of Acts tells us that that the angels, that the angels declared unto the apostles as they as they stood there watching Jesus ascend from the Mount of Olives up into heaven, taken up in the cloud, that this same Jesus that they seen taken up, that he will return in like manner. Jesus here is affirming. He said, I come quickly. This is a, a, a promise to reinstate his promise of his return. And so now, upon hearing this, the Apostle John expressed his absolute belief in the Lord's promise. He says, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Now, this also should be not only the expectation of John, but the expectation of all those who love the Lord and long for the Lord's return. Titus 2.13 says, that 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 we as Christians, that we should be what looking, waiting, anticipating our Lord's return. For in Titus two thirteen says it says looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Are we longing for, for the Lord to return or are we just in, enjoying this worldly environment that we're in and, and that well maybe, you know, uh, the Lord can return a, a little later, but first let me enjoy these, these material things that I have here on earth. Or, or is there a, a longing, looking, Looking, being, being, being anxious, designed for the Lord to return. You know, we as Christians, you know, we, we need to be mindful that the Lord can return any second. And so we, we need to be mindful that if the Lord returns, when, not say if, but when he returns, what would he find us doing? Will he find us as 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 slowful and and uh, unfaithful servants? Will he find us living in those presumptuous with sins, those sins that that easily overtake us, or, or those or those sins that we don't want to give up we need to be mindful that the Lord any second so let him not catch us unaware in doing those things which is not pleasing unto him and so we find in verse 21 of our lesson it says it may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen may the un favor, the unmerited favor, the favor that we do not deserve, the favor that we did not earn, but but God's favor, Jesus' favor, even the favor of Christ, even now where, 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 where we as saints fall short that that we have an intercessor right now in heaven that's making intercessions for you and for me. May, may that favor be with us all. That is the favor and powerful influence of Jesus Christ would be in all our life. That is to the whole church of Christ. Every part of the earth, wherever believers might be, and throughout 
all periods of time, from from the past to the present and to the future, members of his church, may his grace be with us all. And then John says, Amen. That is to me, so be it and so shall it be forever and ever. From beginning to end. From the very beginning, God had planned to love man. And, and and his plan will run even to the end. That that God has loved us from the creation of man, from his fall, even during the period of time until the end of this present age. God has always loved us and had mercy and compassion on us. Who wouldn't serve such a loving God? The Spirit say, come. We as the church, we need to tell people to come. Not to a religion, but to come to the living water. But to come to the Savior of all mankind. And let him not only be our Savior, but let him be our Lord. May God bless you and keep you.